Hello, hello, hello. In this short worked example, I'm going to talk about the projection operator, something that uh, Beck introduces in, in chapter five, uh, which we're not reading uh, this term, but is used in chapter eight, which you are reading. Uh, so it'll be good to familiarize yourself with it if you haven't seen it already. And the projection operator, as you'll see, uh, is really nothing new. It's just mostly a uh, uh, sort of a notational change. Uh, so let's dig in. So let's consider a very generic case in which we have some quantum state psi that is a linear combination or a superposition of two different basis states, alpha and beta. And if we want to calculate the probability that if we make a measurement on this state that we end up in uh, measuring an eigenvalue corresponding to the basis state alpha, this probability is, of course, calculated by taking the magnitude squared of the probability amplitude, which is the inner product of psi with alpha. Now, all I'm going to do here is to uh, rewrite this quantity. Uh, doing a little bit of mathematical manipulation. So I can rewrite the absolute value of the inner product of psi with alpha squared, the absolute value uh, squared of a complex quantity can just be written as the quantity times the complex conjugate of that quantity. That's just a mathematical fact. And then I can rewrite the complex conjugate of this inner product here uh, just by reversing uh, the order of psi and alpha. So I can rewrite this as the inner product of psi with alpha times the inner product of alpha with psi. And now I'm going to just make a definition. The, this quantity that I've shaded in yellow here, I'm going to define using the notation that Beck uses. I'm going to define the projection operator associated with alpha is just by definition this quantity here, a ket of alpha times a bra of alpha. So the probability of measuring uh, the result uh, alpha is just the expectation value of the projection operator. In other words, this quantity, when the operator, when the projection operator is sandwiched in between the size, that's just what we call the expectation value of this operator, of this projection operator. And this is the notation that you'll see uh, used in, a, it's introduced in chapter five of Beck, but he uses it um, in chapter eight when he's calculating probability. So it's really nothing new. Uh, it's just a recasting uh, in a slightly different form of something that you already knew. And let's just finish up by uh, coming on exactly why it's called the projection operator. Well, if you look at what happens when you operate uh, with the projection operator on our state psi, just write out what it means. I'm plugging in uh, what psi is. And then when the projection operator operates, uh, you get this here and, and uh, this line here. Uh, we're going to take advantage of the orthonormality of the states alpha and beta. So uh, this first term here, this first inner product here is a 1. And the, this inner product here, due to the orthonormality of alpha and beta, gives 0. So we show that when the projection operator acts on psi, what do you get? You get C alpha times the state alpha. So the result looks an awful lot like what happens when you take an ordinary vector and you take its projection onto a certain uh, axis. Uh, you, you know, you would, if this uh, uh, is a vector, any, this red arrow represents any arbitrary vector. This length here represents the projection of that vector onto the horizontal axis. Um, so in a similar way, the projection operator on a state psi uh, projects, when you project uh, 
uh, piece of alpha projects on, onto uh, the state alpha. So that's it for this short worked example on the projection operator. Hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye. Uh,